All right, today we're going to go from a Fisher projection to a Haworth projection for a carbohydrate. This is a carbohydrate. This is a typical six carbon. So it's a hexose, six carbons. It is also an aldose because it has an aldehyde. Okay, what happens is in solution, this is a straight chain carbohydrate. In solution, a very, very small percentage of the carbohydrate is in this form. Okay, the Fischer projection means that things that are on the left and right are coming out of the plane of the board. Things that are the lines, the bonds that are vertical are going back into the plane of the board. Okay, so if you remember, each of these carbons has four bonds, so it's tetrahedral. Okay, so this is how this is supposed to look in a Fischer projection, so that this is kind of a three-dimensional representation. This one, of course, is trigonal planar, so it's flat, so you don't have the um, Hayworth projection. And this on the bottom, you would have the H like that, and the OH like that. And then these are all going forward and back in the plane of the board. Okay, so that's your Fischer projection. Now, like I said, in solution, very, very small percentage of your carbohydrate in this, is in this form. What is more stable is the cyclic form. The cyclic form is called a Haworth projection. And we're going to focus today on making a Haworth projection from a six-chain aldose sugar. All right. What you want to do for that is, remember, in chapters before, we made hemiacetals. How do we make a hemiacetal? Well, we took an alcohol plus an aldehyde or a ketone. Okay? We ended up with this carbon having an OH on it and then an OR group on it, and then whatever else it had. Say it had an H and an R. So an OH and an OR gave us our hemiacetal. Well, gosh, look, we're going to do the same thing here. What do we have? Lots of OHs. And we have a carbonyl. Okay, so we're going to make a hemiacetal. Now, theoretically, we can use any of these hydroxides. Okay, but because of the uh, ring structure and the bond angles, remember a tetrahedral is 109 degrees, what's going to really happen is the, uh, the hydroxyl that's involved is the number 5. So you start at the carbonyl end, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is your number 5 carbon, so this is the hydroxyl that's involved. Okay, your Haworth projection is going to end up looking, it's going to be a six-membered ring, but one of the things in the ring is going to be an oxygen. That oxygen right there is this oxygen right there. Okay? So, carbon number five is right here. This is carbon number four. This is carbon number three, number two, and number one. Okay? Where's carbon number six? Number six, we typically write going up. CH2OH. So it remains unchanged. It basically just sticks out. Okay? It's not in the ring because a seven-membered ring is less stable than a five-membered ring. Okay? Now, our general rule is if it's on the right-hand side of a Fischer projection, it's going to go down on the Haworth. So if we look at carbon number two, right-hand side, so this is going to point down. We typically don't put in the hydrogens because it just it adds clutter. Left hand side, up. Two, three, four. Left hand side, up. And then number five, like I said, we just typically draw it with this configuration. Okay. Now, number one carbon is a little tricky because look at this. This is a chiral center, this is a chiral center, this is a chiral center, and this is a chiral center. So we have one, two, three, four chiral carbons here. And you know that because each of these carbons has four different things bonded to it. The ones that don't are carbon number six and carbon number one. Okay, It's achiral. But when we go ahead and make it a cyclic hemiacetal, all of a sudden it becomes a chiral center. 
what happens then is you have two choices. This becomes a hydroxyl, and it can go up or it can go down. Okay, if we did this reaction in a test tube, it has a 50-50 chance of which way it's going to go, up or down. Now, enzymatically in your body, certain, certain um, forms are favored. These are called, this is called the anomeric carbon. Okay, and if it points up, it's a beta sugar. If it points down, it's an alpha sugar. Okay, so you have to be told, draw the alpha form, draw the beta form. But then depending on that, say I said draw the alpha form, then I would erase this, and this would just be a hydrogen right here. Good, so that's how we go from the Fisher projection to a Haworth projection.